Here's the big issue, and this is why the whole statin field is just in a complete, absolute mess. There's not one LDL, there are two. Okay. Now, when you measure LDL on your blood panel, you're measuring both at the same time. There are ways to separate the two, but we're not doing that because that's expensive. So we're only getting one LDL and we're getting two species that are being measured at the same time. One is called large buoyant LDL. It is cardiovascularly neutral. It is not the problem. And 80% of the LDL you measure is the large buoyant, which is not the problem. 20% is called small dense LDL. Mm -hmm. Now, small dense or type B LDLs sometimes referred to, that's the problem. That's the atherogenic particle. That's the one that's easily oxidized. That's the one that causes inflammation. That's the one that has to go down. But it's only 20% of the total. So it doesn't, you know, the, the total LDL doesn't really reflect that. The point is that dietary fat raises your large buoyant LDL. But who cares? Like omega Carbohydrate. Can I just get that in omega 3s if you're done done right? Well, they're going to raise LDL on the overall, you know, when I hear from a patient or a doctor, yeah. they could raise it. They lower triglycerides, but they raise a little LDL a little possibly, but they're not bad. That's no, they actually bad. lower omega three is actually lower triglycerides. triglycerides. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they lower, lower triglycerides. triglycerides, but they yeah. And triglycerides are way more important than LDL. The hazard risk ratio for LDL and heart disease is one point three. The mm -hmm. hazard risk ratio for triglycerides and heart disease is one point eight. So fifty percent more important right. than LDL. But we put all of our uh, uh, eggs in the LDL basket, and the reason was because. We had a drug for it, and because pharma told us that was what we should do. Well, it turns out that's not such a good idea. Now, carbohydrate is what drives the small dense LDL, in particular sugar, mm -hmm. it's driving that small dense LDL. When you take a statin, yes, you are lowering your LDL, that is true, but you are lowering the large buoyant, which is not the problem. Right. It's not doing anything to the small dense. So on paper, it looks like your LDL is going down. But in reality, the bad guy is still there. And that's why for primary prevention, statins don't have very much of an effect. So I think that we've gotten this whole LDL mishmash completely wrong and we have to rethink it. The point is we have to rethink our diet before mm -hmm. we can rethink our LDL. I think that's super interesting and important even, you know, look, in, in clinical terms, it's very hard to get people off of their statins. Of course, there's even other alternatives to it, plant sterols and, um, you know, bergamot and, you know, all sorts of other natural components. But what's interesting is most cardiologists don't even put patients on ubiquinol or CoQ10, which LDL carries around the body. Those are part of our metabolism, our, our you know, mitochondrial support. And so- Well, yes, no. I mean, all that's true. I, I don't argue that. Right, right. CoQ10 a, a, a is very important for mm -hmm. normal um, uh, mitochondrial function. Mm -hmm. The question is, does co do CoQ10 supplements actually get there? Right. And there's data that says that they don't get there very well. And ubiquinol is so, more um, active. So maybe that's the yeah. problem with the studies. I don't know. But, yeah. you know, certainly yeah. there's an argument there that everyone should at least be taking that when they're on a statin. We've learned, we've learned that not every uh, nutrient is absorbed equally. Mm -hmm. And okay. so this is, this is a problem. I'm actually working with a company right now that's trying to increase the level of a polyamine called spermidine, mm -hmm. because spermidine helps promote autophagy. The reason that spermidine is not on everyone's lips is because the studies that have given spermidine, it hasn't been absorbed. But mm. you know this company has figured out a way to increase its absorption. So just because you take something doesn't mean you get something. And this True. may very well be the case for CoQ10, ubiquinol, and s several of the other right. uh, supplements. So I'm not a big supplement fan. My next right question now. was, what do you think of supplement? Well, oh. the ones that I that there's actually data for are um, omega threes, mm -hmm. vitamin C, mm -hmm. and vitamin D. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Those are the ones we have data for. And even the vitamin D literature is a real mess too. Um, and I'll tell you, the, the vitamin D literature gets complicated because there are two pathways for vitamin D. There's the activation pathway to 125-dihydroxy-D, but there's also the inactivation pathway to 24-25-dihydroxy-D. It turns out inflammation inactivates your vitamin D, takes mm -hmm. it to 24-25. So if you measure 25-hydroxy-D, it looks low. But then when you give people vitamin D supplementation, guess what? The 25-hydroxy-D doesn't go up. And the reason is because it's all being shunted to the inactivation pathway. Why? Well, because you're inflamed. And well, because vitamin D... Yeah. So how well, do you deal with that? D, do you, you have to take away the inflammation and then they'll start absorbing... Exactly. Because some people think supplements come first to take down inflammation, but you're arguing... I think it's the other way around. Okay. I think That's the inflammation has to go down in order to make the supplements work. That's interesting. And we're nutrient deficient as a culture anyway. That's a whole separate topic for another day, independent. Well, that's because of our food, uh, right. because our food's exactly. been bred. Because you know what? New, micronutrients don't taste that good. Right. Right. Okay, so and no been, one wants, so right, all, exactly. All of our apples and oranges and tomatoes and everything have all been bred to be sweeter Right. And that means because they have fewer micronutrients in them because those nucleic acids, polyphenols, flavonoids, they don't taste that good. Right. Kids don't want to eat their broccoli. What's going yeah. on?